Today, I'm watching Jackie Aina's newest video on her beauty maintenance. For those of you who don't know who Jackie Aina is, first of all, where have you been for the last 10 years? Second, how dare you? Jackie Aina is one of the OG gurus of YouTube and she's of Nigerian and African American descent. She reigns on YouTube with a 3 million subscribers and a dedicated community of fans worldwide. So the specific video that I'm going to be reacting to today is called $3,000 Beauty Maintenance Week! Exclamation mark. Facials, laser, treatments and more. I am so interested to find out what this is all about and if she really is going to go into detail because I like detail. Okay? So let's do it. Money! How much does it cost to be a beauty guru and maintain a monthly beauty regiment? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Jackie Ina. What's good? How you doing? As you guys know, I'm in the beauty industry and there's some things that honestly I would not do. I wouldn't even do it if I didn't have this job. I'm really nosy and I like seeing what other people's beauty regimens and routines are. So I figured why not take y'all along with a week of one of mine. Really quick, I just want to reiterate that a lot of the stuff I do is a lot more than the average person's and I want to throw that out there because I think sometimes people see some of the stuff that I do and they feel tempted to like keep up or to try to emulate. You do not have to do these things. I'm in the beauty industry. You guys are constantly looking at me in 4K. So I kind of have to raise the bar. It's, it's a lot. It by no means means that you have to do the same. Please. I just want to reiterate that. I love the intro. She is full of energy as typical Jackie. I also like the disclaimer that she put in. I don't know about you, but the average person doesn't have $3,000 to be spending weekly on skincare and beauty treatments. I started out the day with a pedicure. I do like doing my pedicures at home, y'all, because I'm a licensed cosmetologist. That means hair, skin, and nails, for those that don't know what that means. I sometimes feel really uncomfortable. This was like a level of discomfort that existed even before COVID, but I feel sometimes really uncomfortable at like traditional nail salons because even at like high-end ones in really nice neighborhoods, sometimes they do things that it's like, you were not supposed to do that, or that was really unsanitary. As women, do we just feel uncomfortable calling out gross things when we see them like when we're in the beautician's chair or in the nail salon chair like please call them out and you don't have to be rude you can be polite you can say no can you change that nail buffer or hey do you mind using a new nail file it can be super nice it can be super polite if they don't want to do that then you need to find somewhere else when you're paying money for a service i think you also have a right to be picky about how that service is delivered and whether it meets your expectations is a fair exchange. I don't feel any sort of way if I don't feel that things are being done properly or I feel disrespected or I'm not being treated as a proper client to leave. So I just get acrylics on my big toes. So you know I had to get the bright white okay. and this on average I would say if I was doing full on acrylics all my feet all my toesies it probably cost me about 70 zolas and that does not include tip but because I was just getting polish changed this time this was about like 50 and then I think I tipped I always tip like 20 especially if I really really love someone's service there is something about having a nice neat and fresh manicure pedicure it just makes you feel like you can take on anything to anybody out there that thinks it's frivolous or it's a waste of money bruh. for me if it makes me feel good and it's not a big part of my budget and i can comfortably afford it then I don't see what the big deal is. Next, I'm going to get into brow lamination. This is actually something I look forward to all month, okay? Brow lamination is actually something that you can go get done professionally, but if you are scary when it comes to chemicals, I would not advise you to do this. <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff that sometimes I just do myself because I've been trained to work with chemicals and things of that, like I'm licensed to do so. There are such things as brow lamination kits, but if you aren't comfortable, then you can go to like a beauty spa and have them do it for you. But basically brow lamination is just another way of saying a relaxer for the brows. It is a technique that completely straightens out the brows. So if you have unruly, super curly, or just otherwise out of control brows that just don't really have a nice defined shape, I find that relaxing them just smooths them all the way out. And I promise you, this is the most easiest thing that you can do at home by yourself. Literally anyone can do it. But like I said, if you scary girl, then I am not liable. Don't do this. Don't, don't do it, okay? Call your lawyer. I've spent many a pretty coin on brow products, brow pencils, brow kits, all this kind of stuff. 
The only thing I haven't done personally is microblading. Brow lamination is the next big thing. I did it. I ordered a kit on Amazon and it worked, but it didn't work for long. And I don't know if it was the kit that I used, but it irritated my skin and the results don't last for long. If your brows are a bit more tamer or a bit sparse, I would skip brow lamination. I don't think it works. And looking at Jackie's brows, her brows don't look particularly unruly or out of control. And I think she might just get by with just using some brow products like the brow wax or soap brows just instead. So the brow lamination, I would give that one a miss. I'm gonna talk about some of the body care that I've been using the past couple months. As smooth and clear as my skin is, nothing has helped me with back me the way that this Olay retinol line has. It's the cleansing and renewing with retinol and then they also have the nighttime wins off body conditioner also with retinol. So the problem with me is just the way that I hate doing before and afters because I don't like showing people the ugly. So unfortunately I don't have any before. I'm going to show you now a picture of what it looks like now. My skin on my back. Clarity. <laughs> it's the evenness for me. Do you see this? My back has never looked like this. The great thing about being able to integrate this product into today's partnership is because you guys are seeing me do these thousand dollar treatments and these hundred dollar facials. So if my body care can cost me less than like 15 20 dollars then why the hell not it's summer guys you want to be wearing your tank tops your nice maxi dresses backless strapless and back knee is a really annoying thing to fix the good thing that jackie has shown is that there are some treatments that work for back knee the main thing with back knee that your skin needs is exfoliation either with a combination of physical scrubs or the gloves that she has or with chemicals like lactic acid or glycolic acid. Okay, next you're following me to a laser hair removal appointment. And the reason why this appointment is so excited is because I've been waiting on you for this <laughs> Quite dramatic, but you know I'm Nigerian, so hello, welcome. I have not gotten laser done since February of last year, okay? I've really been struggling. Those of you guys that do laser hair removal, you know the upkeep is what gives you the result. Now, I've been doing laser hair removal off and on for like, golly whiz, what was the first year I did this? 2016, 2017, like it's been a minute. And the reason why I say off and on is because one, I'm really hairy. Two, you're supposed to do it back to back six weeks at a time. But what ends up happening with me because I'm busy and also I'm lazy child is it ends up being like two sessions and then I'll go back six months later and then I'll do like one session. I would say out of everything, this is probably the most expensive procedure. I feel for a lot of you watching who have had your lasers and hair removal plans scuppered by COVID. It has been tough, but she owns up to part of it being her own fault. Laser works, but for it to work, you have to play by the rules. And the number one rule is that you must be having your sessions every six to eight weeks. Do not be tempted to leave it much longer because you're going to throw the whole thing out of sync. The process of removing hair relies on catching the hairs at the right phase of hair growth. And if you're leaving it for much longer than six, eight weeks, you're throwing away all the progress that you would have made from previous sessions. As much as we complain about laser hair removal being expensive, I think it's worth it. Last year, I added on upper lip but then the world shut down and I just did it because I was just like, eh, might as well. I think they're having a special time child. Get them specials. I was with you until you mentioned getting laser on your upper lip. For most women with problematic facial hair, this happens as a result of hormonal reasons. In some cases, if you have laser on these areas, it may not be effective. And in worst case scenario, it may even trigger that area to produce more hair. The other thing about laser hair removal is that it's not guaranteed to give permanent results. Only method that does guarantee hair removal permanently is electrolysis. And that works a treat for removing hair on your face, neck, jaw, around the mouth. That is what I would recommend not laser hair removal. Next, it's time to get a facial. It's facial time and my skin, I don't know what's been going on with me, but around my chin, I had a little bit of a breakout. I'm sitting in your chair and you're talking to me about crow's feet and wrinkles. I'm not your customer. I'm just not, and that's no shade. A lot of black women with dark skin like me, we don't really, for the most, I'm generally speaking, please, I don't, I'm not talking about your auntie from 
Kentucky, I don't care. But I'm just saying, like most black women in general, and yeah, I'm in my 30s, but that's just not my concern right now. I don't care about anti-aging as much as I do hyperpigmentation. Do I care about anti-aging? Yes, but not as much as I do about dark marks and acne. Like those are my problem areas. I don't really need wrinkle treatment. Most of us who have been blessed with melanin and our dark skin, brown skin, one of our main issues is pigmentation. I'm not as worried about lines and wrinkles, although I don't want them either. One of the main things that bothers me and a lot of the clients that I see is dealing with pigmentation problems. However, in an ideal world, you're treating all of these things simultaneously. Just because you're focusing on pigmentation doesn't mean that you can't be worried about skin aging and preventing skin aging. And the good news is that a lot of the products that treat and work against hyperpigmentation also help to improve skin texture. Things like retinols, vitamin C, you know, niacinamide. A lot of these are jack of all trade ingredients. So if you're investing in your skincare and you're using these products, the likelihood is that you're covered. So I would rest easy knowing that. This is a chemical peel. Oh, We're doing, doing a chemical peels. peel. Um, it's a Jesner blended with uh, lactic acid and glycolic acid. Girl, you better tell them. So now my skin is blanching. And usually when you do a chemical peel, it dries the hell out of your skin to get your skin to peel. So that's quite literally what's happening. That white stuff that you see is called blanching. I've, never, I've actually never heard that term before. And Finya just taught me that. And it was very, this is probably like one of the strongest peels I think I've ever done. But it's fine. It's getting better. Some of the inflamed looking this has calmed down my skin feels a little tight usually when you blanch mm -hmm. it means that you're gonna most likely peel there a lot yeah yeah so chances are she's gonna peel a lot here mm -hmm. and a little bit on her cheeks so which is why her forehead's not blanching she's probably not gonna flake there or peel there that's why i wanted a freaking peel i know if you've never done a skin peel or you've never even thought about it i think you're missing a trick Chemical peels come in three strengths. Light peels, they only reach the surface of the skin. Then you've got medium peels, which penetrate deeper. And then finally, you've got deeper peels, which the clue is in the name. They penetrate deeper within the layers of the skin. What you can see there on Jackie's skin are areas that have turned white. And this is called blanching. Blanching happens in areas and indicates that the chemical peel has penetrated. This is different to frosting. Frosting is just the salt crystals forming on the skin. Next, I got to do a lymphatic drainage massage at the Flavia Lanini Institute. Okay, this is as good as it gets as before. The lighting in here is not that great, but I am quite bloated this week. Just, just a little bit, but this is what the girls come in here for. A snatched waist, and I think I'm already snatched, but you know what? We could get rid of some water weight. Really? Oh my God, she's bloated? Where? I don't see anything. I don't see a bloat. She looks snatched already. So then the technician pulled out this red suction cup looking thing. I've never seen that before in my entire life. Is this, this isn't cupping, is it? No, it's not. Oh, this okay. is in dermology. So I didn't immediately see or feel a difference. I definitely felt lighter and i like i said i felt really thirsty but day three i'm like okay like it's kind of it's kind of giving so i showed y'all what i went in looking like i definitely had some fluid build up here and here and this is two days after the massage i feel great i've never had a lymphatic drainage massage but i've seen them and i've heard people rave all about them and if you've had a lymphatic massage and you've had a good experience definitely drop a comment and let me know because i'm really interested i'm just wondering that in general how effective is it in helping you to kind of get more snatched or reduce bloating obviously jackie's had a good experience and it looks like she's gone to a top med spa in la but for the rest of us what are we supposed to do mm. the whole premise of lymphatic drainage is that we all have a lymphatic system and they have a role in helping to eliminate toxins and excess fluid so in certain issues like if you have fluid retention or what we call lymphedema then having massage is definitely beneficial. 
I'm not against having lymphatic drainage massage. I think, yes, it can be helpful in the right instances. I've just not personally found the need to go and do it. And I think rather than pinning all your hopes on having lymphatic drainage massage, if you want to really slim down, lose weight, bloat, you would be much better served by addressing your diet, making sure that you're cutting out anything that's causing bloating and exercising. At least for Jackie, she's definitely showing some results. But would I say weekly for my budget? Thank you so much, Fabia, for comping the service. I what, what, what did she say? Did she say comping the service? Did, like, as in it was free? As much as we like to think that we all give unbiased, impartial reviews, there's always an element there when you know you're getting something for nothing. You're much more likely to be complimentary about it. The other thing is that this is her result two days after the treatment. What if we were to come back in a week's time, six weeks time, would we still see these same results? I just want to maintain a healthier lifestyle in general. So this was like the great addition to kind of maintain that. Four hundred dollars. Four hundred. One, two, three, four hundred dollars every week. So in a whole year, fifty-two times four hundred dollars, you're going to spend twenty thousand eight hundred dollars on one single treatment. I think it's a no for me. So let's look at the damage. What's the damage to our pocket? So I really hope you guys enjoyed Maintenance Monday. What do we spend this week? <clears throat> wow. So for her pedicure, she's paying $70. You have to factor in that the person that she's calling does in-house services. So I'll allow that. $250 for a facial, especially when you're having a chemical peel, that's about average, I would say. And for her laser, she's paying $1,300. I can't tell if that's for an entire package of laser treatments or if it's per session, but it doesn't seem like an outlandish figure. And that leaves us the last thing on the list, which is the massage at $400. Now, this is something that I personally think that Jackie didn't need. She was already snatched to begin with, I would just say we can just skip this part and put our pennies to better use. In one week, Jackie spent close to $2,000 in beauty treatments. And if we take away the fact that the massage was a free treatment, it's less than that. So not quite in line with the $3,000 clickbait title, but I'll forgive her for that. So what do you guys think? Which of Jackie's treatments would be on your list of hits and misses? Let me know and drop a line in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.